Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Shaini Vikram Ganji. I am working as assistant professor in a triple department. Today, I want to uh, continue uh, the session on the topic on the subject called electrical measurements. Particularly, in this class, uh, we would like to focus on uh, bridge networks here. So, first of all, there is a basic question here. Why the bridge is used? So generally, uh, today, if you take any electronic component or electrical component, there we will find many resistors, inductors and capacitors there. Then how do we know the exact value of that resistance? That is the main question and we have to think of, of that question. So for example, if you take a resistance, how we know the value of that resistance? So here basically, there are two ways to measure the value of any parameter. For example, if you take a resistance, this resistance could be measured in two ways. One is practical way and another one is by analytical approach. So if we go for practical approach, simply we need to connect a multimeter like this, which we use in a lab. So 1 terminal is connected to first and second so another terminal to the second one so if we connect uh, the multimeter to this uh, unknown value of resistance uh, it will directly give the value of the resistance uh, on this uh, seven segment display on the other hand uh, if we want to go for analytical approach uh, this analytical approach needs some experimental setup so that experimental setup uh, we use uh, is called bridge networks so basically what is bridge so these uh, bridge networks uh, are mainly used to measure the unknown value of resistance inductance and the capacitance here so basically these bridge networks are classified into two ways and the one is which is called ac bridge and the next one is called dc bridge as the name suggests that ac dc this ac bridges are mainly used to measure the inductance and the capacitance why because this inductance and capacitance are affected with ac and uh, when coming to the DC bridge, uh, this DC bridge is mainly used to measure the unknown value of resistance only. And coming to the DC bridge, uh, there are two types of bridges. Uh, the one is called Wheatstone bridge and the second one is called Kelvin's bridge. So and coming to the AC bridges, there are wide variety of bridges available. So Maxwell's inductance bridge, we have Maxwell's inductance capacitance. Likewise, we have Hayes bridge, Anderson's, Shearing and Wayne's bridge. And out of this, uh, the top four will, uh, will give the unknown value of inductance uh, and the bottom two will give the value of unknown capacitance here. So basically in the bridge networks we will come across a condition called balanced condition. So that balanced condition uh, we will use detectors to detect that the balanced condition. So basically for the purpose of detection we will use three types of instruments here. The one is called headphone or you can use galvanometer and or you can use multimeter all these three instruments are used to detect a balanced condition in the bridge networks here so here let us discuss about this maxwell's inductance bridge as the name indicate inductance so this bridge mainly used to measure the unknown value of inductance in terms of the known values here basically uh, this bridge network essentially consists of four arms here so we can call it as a a b c there are four arms uh, which are arranged in a rhombus like shape 
so the value which we want to know the value or which the which is the unknown value are kept in the arms a b here that means uh, here r1 and l1 are the unknown value of the resistances while the other three arms uh, equipped with some resistance and inductances here all these are known resistances that means uh, r3 is a known value r4 is the known value and of course r2 and l2 are also the known value but uh, that are variable here so when we put this uh, resistances in this uh, uh, fashion and then what we have to do means we have to um, get the balanced condition so this balanced conditions could be obtained by just varying the suitable values of r2 and l2 that means uh, you put the unknown value of resistance in the arm ab and we try to adjust this uh, r2 and l2 and at some condition uh, here the total current flowing uh, in this detector will be zero that is called the balanced condition that means uh, at the balance uh, we can say mathematically the voltage drop across this arm ab will be equal to the voltage drop across the arm ad so that is one and the other one we can say the voltage drop across the arm bc will be equal to the voltage test drop across the arm cd so this is the mathematical representation and uh, compulsorily we have to indicate that uh, at balanced condition the detector current will be zero then only these two equations are possible now let us write some uh, mathematical equations here and depending on this e1 equal to e2 and e3 equal to e4 here so first of all let us go for this e1 equal to e2 here we can write mathematically e1 equal to e2 if we expand this one which is called e1 that means we have to calculate the voltage drop across this arm ab so the current flowing in this arm is i1 so the voltage drop will be equal to i1 into r1 plus j omega l1 so this j omega l1 is the impedance representation of an inductor j omega l1 where omega is called the angular uh, frequency and j is the complex notation of the inductor and uh, of course we could if you go for e2 which is the arm ad the current flowing in this arm will be i2 therefore the voltage drop could be written as uh, i2 into r2 plus small r2 plus j omega l2 so here this is the <coughs> call this as equation one here now coming to e3 equal to e4 so mathematically this can also be written as e3 equal to e4 so if we expand this e3 equal to e4 so the current flowing in this arm bc at the balanced condition is i1 and in the same way the current flowing through this arm cd will be i2 at the balanced condition so if we write for e3 here we can get i1 r3 will be equal to i1 r3 will be equal to i2 r4 call this as equation 2 now let us do equation 2 by equation 1 we will get the required values of uh, the unknown unknown resistance so equation 2 by equation 1 if we take uh, so i1 r3 will be equal to i1 r3 by i1 into r1 plus j omega l1 will be equal to i2 r4 by i2 into r2 plus small r2 plus j omega l2 so here we will have some cancellations in the numerator and denominator i1 i1 get cancelled i2 and i2 get cancelled now what we have to do means we have to cross multiply simply so let us uh, do uh, r3 into the denominator so we will get uh, r3 r2 plus small r2 r3 plus j omega l2 r3 will be equal to 
now this denominator into the numerator will give r1 r4 plus j omega l1 r4 so if we clearly observe this mathematical equation it's a combination of both the real terms and the imaginary terms here so mathematically we can separate or we can equate the real terms and we can equate and uh, the imaginary terms also so here we can do uh, separating real terms and imaginary terms or equating simply we can write equating real and imaginary terms equating real and imaginary terms so r3 r2 is a real term and r2 r3 will be the real term and r1 r4 will be the real term so equating all these real terms we will get r3 into r2 plus small r2 will be equal to r1 r4 so r1 could be obtained here from r3 by r4 into capital R2 plus small r2 so R1 and in the same way separating or equating um, imaginary term separating imaginary term this is one term and this is the other term in the right hand side so um, equating the both the terms we will have j omega l2 r3 will be equal to j omega l1 r4 again uh, we will have some cancellations of the uh, imaginary terms j omega j omega would cancel and from this one we can have l1 equal to r3 by r4 into l2 so here we will we got uh, the unknown r1 which is called the unknown value of the resistance and l1 is called unknown value of the inductance so using this maxwell's inductance bridge we can understand that the unknown value of inductor and capacitor could be obtained within in terms in terms of the known values that means r3 r4 r2 and small r2 are known values r3 r4 and l2 are the known values so we can say the bridge networks particularly this maxwell inductance bridge gives the unknown value of inductor and capacitor in terms of the other values likewise here all the bridge networks which we have in the list will depend upon the same mathematical procedure we have to use the balanced condition and we have to separate that real and imaginary terms so it will give the unknown values of the parameters here so this is about uh, inductance bridge and uh, thank you thank you for uh, giving this opportunity and thank you for watching